The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New York had a major ruling in its favor earlier this month as a federal court granted an injunction blocking the Obamacare mandate by forcing or from keeping to force the religious institutions to provide contraceptive care to employees at its nonprofit affiliates. So why is this decision so important for Catholics and all Christians across America? Joining me now is the National Director of Priests for Life, Father Frank Provone. Father Frank, good to have you here. Governor, Thank good you. to see you. Are you optimistic that this recent court ruling may lead to similar judgments that would grant not just Catholics, but, but all people of conscience, uh, the ability to practice their faith without the government telling them how much faith they could practice. Well, this is a serious problem. I am optimistic. There are a lot of court cases. Ours is one of them, a priest for life. Uh, we recently were told just the opposite mm -hmm. of what the New York case was told. But uh, I think as time goes on and the, and the cases go higher in the, uh, on the level of the courts, we're going to see more victories. I mean, there have been a lot of lawsuits. I think the ACLU said there's been 88 different lawsuits filed on behalf of religious organizations to counter uh, Obamacare, is this going to end up likely in the Supreme Court and they're going to have to make this decision? Yes, I think so. And you know, this, because this, this goes to something that is so basic to all Americans. The arguments can be abstruse, can be hard to understand, people are not so sure sometimes what we're objecting to. But here's the bottom line. I love my church and I love my country and I want to be able to do both at the same time. Mm. I don't want to have to be told that I have to choose between being a faithful Catholic and a good citizen. Because I, I think that's the fundamental heart of the question. There are a lot of people who maybe they're not Catholic or they're not evangelical, and so they don't get the whole idea of why this is a, 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 an important issue. So if somebody were to come up to you on the street and say, Father Frank, explain to me, why do Catholics care so much about uh, whether they have to provide contraceptives? I mean, what, what's the big deal here? Okay, there's a few issues. First of all, the government has announced that it wants to expand the ease of access to contraceptives abortion-inducing drugs, mm -hmm. and uh, sterilization. Now, the Catholic Church has some pretty strong teachings from the very beginning against those practices. So groups like Priests for Life exist to impart those teachings, to build what we, what we all want, a culture of life. And now the government is telling us, when you provide health insurance for your employees, you have to be part of this plan because your insurance plan is going to give that coverage to them free of charge. You have to be part of this plan. And we're saying, listen, we want to provide health insurance coverage to our employees. But if you have that plan, do it yourself. Don't involve us. The way this works is we're being told we have to be part of it. Now, the case you mentioned at the outset for the, in, in New York, they were told you are exempt. Churches are exempt from this requirement. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a religious organization that I head. We have the same beliefs, the same convictions. We're facing the same mandate. Why can't we have the exemption too? One of the things the administration is doing here, it's dividing between different, discriminating between different religious groups who believe the same things and are under the same mandate. Some of us get the exemption and some don't. To us, that just doesn't make sense. It, it would almost be like uh, if the government said that, if, uh, let's say, an Orthodox Jewish synagogue provided food baskets, they would be required to put bacon-wrapped shrimp in all the food baskets. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. mean, obviously, that would be an offense to the, the synagogue, who's Orthodox. That's and right. And that's, in essence, what you're saying. Look, it's okay if other people want to provide this, if they believe that. Don't force us to provide something that violates our conscience, our convictions, and our basic religious liberty. Exactly. This is not a matter of saying that the law should, should prohibit the things that we are saying are immoral. This is a matter of be, us being able to practice our faith, not just on Sunday morning in church, but on Monday morning in the workplace. Mm. The way we, 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 not just the way we do the liturgy, but the way we construct our insurance plans and our business practices. Freedom of religion is something every American enjoys, every human being. It's rooted in human dignity. We need to have the right to carry that out. It's already against the law. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act in this country already makes it against the law for the government to force somebody to violate his beliefs or even to pressure them uh, 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 to violate their beliefs or not to fulfill them. And that's what at, what's at issue in these lawsuits. Uh, well, let's just hope that the uh, extreme court, if it ever gets this case, will, yeah. will do a better job of it than they did on Obamacare. Father Frank, always a great pleasure to Thank be you, with Governor. you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you so much for what you do, for standing for life. And it's great to have you here today. Thank you.